for decades, really, the search for an HIV vaccine. Well, it's been one of the biggest challenges in global health, hasn't it? Absolutely. A huge undertaking. People talk about the holy grail, finding that vaccine that could actually stop HIV, prevent infections. It would just change everything. Completely transformational. So today we're diving into some fascinating new research, uh, a recent development on that front. Yeah, and our source here is a paper from Transal Med, just out in 2023. It covers a first in human trial, which is always exciting, for an HIV nanoparticle vaccine candidate. First in human. Okay. And what's important for you, the listener, is that this isn't, you know, a summary or a press release. This is the actual research data. So we're going to unpack what it really tells us about this step forward. Right. So our mission is to get under the hood of this vaccine candidate. What's in it? What kind of immune response did it actually trigger in people? And well, why are these findings seen as a pretty significant step? on this long road. Okay, let's uh, let's unpack this. So maybe we should start with why this has been so incredibly hard. An HIV vaccine, I mean. Yeah, good point. Decades of work. Why is it so tough? Well, HIV itself is just incredibly complex. The main problem is how rapidly it mutates. It's constantly changing its outer surface, creating all these different strains worldwide. But trying to hit a constantly moving target. Exactly. So designing one vaccine to protect against all that diversity is um, a monumental challenge. For a long time, the focus has been on trying to elicit what we call broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs. BNABs, right. Heard that term. These are special antibodies that can actually recognize and neutralize, you know, fight off many different strains of HIV. Finding how to make the body produce those consistently, that's been the central puzzle. Okay, so BNABs are a key goal. They are. But, you know, antibodies aren't the whole story. T-cells are also incredibly important players in the immune system. The other arm of the immune response. Right. Especially the helper T-cells, the CD4 T-cells. Think of them as like the conductors of the orchestra. They help guide the B-cells that make antibodies, and they coordinate other immune attacks. And the study we're looking at, it puts a really strong focus on these helper T-cells. Interesting. So not just about the antibodies directly, but the cells that help make them work well. Precisely. So given all that complexity, this new vaccine candidate, it sounds pretty specific. It's the engineered outer domain germline targeting version 8 EODGT8 60 mer nanoparticle. That's a mouthful. It is. Let's break it down a bit. Okay. Nanoparticle that suggests how it's delivered, right? Tiny particles. Yeah, exactly. Nanoparticles are great vehicles. They can present the vaccine components to the immune system in a really organized and effective way. The 60 mer part refers to this structure, 60 identical protein units arranged together. This repetition helps trigger a strong immune response. Okay, makes sense. And germline targeting, that sounds strategic. It really is. Germline targeting means it's designed to engage with the B cells that are the very, very early precursors to the ones that might eventually produce those powerful B nabs. It's trying to start the process off on the right foot, targeting the specific VRC01 class B cells. VRC01 class. Those are specific B cells known to be potentially good starting points. Yes, they have characteristics that make them promising candidates for developing into BNAB producers. So this vaccine is really designed to prime these specific B cells. It's the first step intended to kick off a process that, you know, with later booster shots, could hopefully lead to mature, broadly neutralizing antibodies. So it's not the whole solution in one shot, it's step one of a potential series. Exactly, it's a priming strategy. And they used an adjuvant with it, uh, AS01B. Right, AS01B. Right. That's a known adjuvant used in other successful vaccines like the Shingrix vaccine for shingles. It's known to really boost the immune response, particularly the T-cell responses, which, as we said, are crucial here. Got it. And this was all tested in the IAVI G001 trial. Correct. The IAVI G001 Phase 1 clinical trial. And again, for you listening, Phase 1 means this is the first time it's tested in humans. The main goals are safety, is it safe? And immunogenicity, does it actually provoke an immune response? So not yet about efficacy, like does it prevent infection? No, not at this stage. That comes later in phase two and phase three trials if the phase one results are promising. Okay, so what did they find in this phase one trial? The abstract mentions robust polyfunctional CD4 T cells. That sounds good. But what does polyfunctional actually mean in this context? It's a really positive sign. Polyfunctional means these helper T cells weren't just doing one thing, like producing one type of signal molecule. They were doing multiple things simultaneously, producing several different cytokines, for example, which are key signaling proteins. So more versatile, more powerful. Exactly. 
It suggests a higher quality, more potent T-cell response, not just quantity, but quality. And these T-cells were targeting the vaccine components as hoped. Which components specifically? They looked at responses to the main HIV part, the EODDT8, and also to another protein component used in the nanoparticle structure called lumazine synthase, or LUMSIN. Okay. And were the responses strong? Quite impressive, actually, for a priming vaccine. Mm -hmm. After two doses, they saw these CD4T helper responses against EODGT8 in 84% of the people who got the vaccine. 84%, wow. And even higher for LUMSIN. 93% of recipients showed responses. And this was seen with both dose levels they tested, the 20 microgram and the 100 microgram dose. That consistency is good, too. Okay, but here's where I thought it got really interesting. They talked about identifying epitope hotspots. What are those? Ah, uh, yes, the hotspots. This is potentially very important. An epitope is the specific small part of an antigen, like a piece of the EOD GT8 or Lumsden protein, that an immune cell, like a T cell, actually recognizes and binds to. Like the specific hook it grabs onto. Precisely. And what they found was that across different people in the trial, the CD4 T cells tended to focus their attacks on the same few regions, these hotspots. So common targets across individuals. Yes. They identified several within EOD GT8 and three specific hotspots within the Lumsden protein. And impressively, 85% of the vaccine recipients showed CD4 T cell responses to at least one of those three Lumsden hotspots. Why is finding these hotspots so significant for future work? because it gives vaccine designers incredibly valuable information. If you know the specific spots the human immune system naturally likes to target effectively, you can potentially design future booster vaccines to focus the immune response even more strongly on those key areas. It's like knowing the bullseye you need to hit. Right, it guides the next steps in the vaccine design. Okay, so we have these strong polyfunctional T cell responses focused on hotspots, but we started by talking uh, about the need for antibodies from B cells. Did they find any link? They did, and this is a critical piece of the puzzle. The study found a correlation, a link between the strength of these vaccine-specific helper CD4 T cells they measured in the blood and the expansion of memory B cells that were specific for the EOD GT8 antigen. Ah, so the T cell activity was linked to the B cell activity they wanted to prime? Why is that connection so important for you, the listener, to understand? What's the significance? Well, it matters hugely because, as we said, B cells make the antibodies. But getting the right kind of antibodies high affinity, potentially broadly neutralizing ones, often requires sustained help from these CD4 T cells. T cells help B cells mature, switch antibody types, and become more effective. So seeing that T cell response correlates with the desired B cell expansion suggests the first part of the plan, the T cell help, is actually working. It strongly suggests that yes. It implies this priming vaccine is successfully initiating that crucial dialogue between T cells and B cells needed to hopefully, down the line, generate those really effective antibodies. It's a very encouraging sign that the fundamental mechanics are operating as designed. Okay, so pulling this together. If we connect this to the bigger picture, yeah. yeah. These findings really demonstrate strong human CD4 T cell responses to what they call an HIV vaccine candidate priming immunogen. It's not the final vaccine, let's be clear. Right, it's a primer. It's a primer. But it's a crucial first step, showing that this specific nanoparticle approach can effectively kickstart this key part of the immune response in humans. And the implication for the future, then, is leveraging this knowledge. Precisely. Identifying these immunodominant CD4 T cell epitopes, these hotspots, gives researchers tools. They could potentially use this information to design better heterologous boost immunogens. Heterologous boosts, meaning different follow-up vaccines. Yeah, follow-up vaccines perhaps using slightly different versions of the HIV antigen or different delivery systems designed to build upon or refine the initial response started by this EOD GT8 primer. Knowing these hotspots helps design those boosts to be more effective, to really drive the B cells towards making B nabs. It's like having a clearer map for the next stage of immune system training. So this deep dive really highlights a tangible, promising step forward. This nanoparticle vaccine seems to successfully start the engine, getting those critical helper T cells engaged in the right way to prime the system for, hopefully, future broadly neutralizing antibody development. It's definitely a significant piece falling into place in a very complex puzzle. Real progress. Which leads to a final thought, maybe, for you to consider. Yeah, this raises an important question, I think. We know this vaccine is designed to prime the system for BNABs, but given how incredibly diverse HIV is out there in the real world, what do you think is the next major hurdle? 
How do we get those primed B cells to fully mature and produce antibodies that can truly handle that vast viral diversity? What kind of research or vaccine design might be needed next to get us closer to that ultimate goal? Something to really chew on. It shows the progress, but also the scale of the challenge still ahead. Fascinating stuff. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into this piece of HIV vaccine research. Thank you.